Ukraine's military says it's consolidating the territory that it has gained in the south and is now trying to punch through the next layer of Russian defenses. This is remarkable new video into out front shows the inside of a Ukrainian armored vehicle at the moment it gets hit by Russian artillery. The Ukrainian soldiers managing to flee the damaged vehicle and continue their combat mission. Melissa Bell is out front. The scars of war. Russia's sprawling network of fortified defenses, including the infamous dragon's teeth, clamping into Ukrainian ground. These pictures, shot by Ukraine's security service and shared exclusively with CNN, a reminder of all that lies before Kyiv's advancing troops. The counteroffensives gained so far, slow but steady. We are not failing, we are moving forward. We liberated thousands of square kilometers of our land through minefields with no air coverage. The Ukrainian military says it's consolidating positions on the southern front lines and looking to the next layer of Russian defenses. With the country's foreign minister reassuring impatient allies. Our partners who are helping us, including the United States, they understand that things are moving in the right direction and they understand that there is no tragedy or no kind of slowdown. Meanwhile, Russia renewing nuclear fears. The country's space agency announcing that it's put the Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missile on combat alert. As attacks on Russian soil increase, drone strikes, once shocking, now routine. Moscow's mayor announcing on Friday the foiling of yet another attack by Ukrainian drones on the capital as well as surrounding regions. Russia's defense ministry spokesperson also praising Russia's air defenses. 281 Ukrainian uncrewed aerial vehicles were destroyed, including one two 141 Stryzh jet, as well as 29 Ukrainian aircraft type UAVs in the western regions of the Russian Federation. But some drones did get through this week. These new satellite images show the damaged planes at the Kresti airbase in Russia's western Pskov region, an attack launched from inside Russia, according to Kyiv. The burned remains of the aircrafts, Russia's own scars of war. Brianna, what's really remarkable about uh, this week's series of drones atta drone attacks against uh, Russia is not just that Ukraine has a newfound desire to make clear that it is responsible, but that it has actually claimed responsibility from inside Russia for those drone strikes that I just mentioned uh, on that airfield to the very west. Now, that airfield is 600 miles to the north of the Ukrainian border. It's just across from the Estonian border. Uh, the idea that Ukrainian forces might be able to carry out attacks so deep into Russian territory from inside Russian ter territory, really quite remarkable, Brianna. Certainly is. Melissa Bell, live for us from Zaporizhia. Thank you. And out front now, we have retired Army Major General James Spider Marks. Uh, General, great to have you with us. You have Russia announcing its newest nuclear weapon amid all of this as well, capable of hitting the continental United States, saying it's now operational and it has been placed on combat duty. How alarming is this to you and, and why is Putin making this announcement now? Well, certainly anything that has anything to do with nukes is alarming. But ICBMs, these intercontinental ballistic missiles that can reach almost any, any part of the globe, are always on combat alert. They're always ready to be launched. So the fact that Russia has announced that is really a narrative that is nothing but redundancy, frankly. But we need to be able to take this very, very seriously. You don't pass these away. What that means is what is our status? What is our capability? What is our alert capability, our ballistic missile defense alert capabilities? Um, and how are we prepared to address these? But the thing about using a nuke, and that's the thing we need to keep in mind, bear in mind as much as Putin needs to go away and we would hope that he would go away, he's chosen not to use a nuke yet. And there's no guarantee that if he were replaced that somebody might choose a different path. Um, so we, we have to bear that in mind. But when you use a nuke, you lose all leverage. They understand that. The Russians understand that as well. You see these drones striking deep inside, several hundred miles 
inside <clears throat> Russia. But you also have Ukraine saying it's got this long range missile that it's developed 435 miles it can travel. Uh, do you think that they'll use that? Well, if they use capabilities like that, complementary to the drone capability that they've demonstrated, they need to make sure that they're striking tac uh, targets that provide them operational advantage. In other words, going after aircraft that can resupply forward Russian troops, going, going against fighter aircraft, going against logistic bases, those are all fair game, and those would provide great advantages. But to launch one of these attacks against any infrastructure that is not directly contributing to the fight would put themselves in the same category as the Russians, which they certainly, I would, I would hope that they would not want to do. Uh, certainly. Uh, good advice. Uh, we'll see how they do proceed. This is going to be very interesting to see how they proceed with this long-range missile. Spider Marks, great to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Brianna.